Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and Peel Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is July 19th, 2019. It's the end of the week. We're heading into the weekend. Uh, I just heard this morning it's supposed to be 105 here tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. I guess we'll all go to the beach. Anyway, um, this is our weekly look back at last week's uh, auction results on eBay. We're going to take a look ahead at some of the stuff coming up next week on eBay and on Catawiki. Uh Catawiki has been getting a lot more stuff lately, so we've, we've sort of expanded it and adjusted some things um, on their side. And uh, eBay this week in Europe is a little bit quiet. The, this week's uh, auction's coming up. Uh, there's few of them we noticed on the on the return list when we do the searches because uh, it's vacation time over there. And, and, you know, and if you're in Europe and you're on vacation, have a great time. God, Europe in summer is fabulous. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was, was that uh, uh, eBay this week finally got us squared away on their site uh, with uh, information and a link to the second opinion program that we partnered with them on. Um, and if you go to the antique section, the Asian antique section, any antique section, you're going to see this, this, this thing, second opinion uh, uh, by bid amount. It was rather nicely done. And they gave it a page, and they explained how it works, and they included, uh, this was something they, they forgot to include before, was a, an illustration of where you can find the link to our site to submit a, an inquiry about uh, an item you're interested in buying before you buy it or after you buy it. We've heard from a lot of people who have bought things and then had second doubts and sent it to us with a link, and um, we've looked at it for them. Okay, uh, We've also had a, a, a lot of people um, uh, uh, send um, – uh, images in of things that are on eBay. Um, it's easier just to use this and send the link um, rather than have to download the images and then and then upload them onto your computer. Uh, you can use either. It depends on what you want, but uh, just a suggestion, okay? And now let's get started. There's some good things this week. This was one of them. This was a very nice uh, uh, late 18th, early 19th century uh, carved tortoiseshell uh, export uh, box, probably a snuff box. Nice quality, had a little nick out of one corner, but beautifully done. This is really beautifully done. And uh, it, uh, I, would, I would think it needs a little bit of a cleaning, a little bit of oiling and so forth. It's got a little, looks like it might have a little ding up here, but nothing much. Overall, it's in very nice condition. These are good boxes. You're not supposed to sell tortoiseshell technically on eBay or ivory, as everybody knows. Uh, but and this fellow did, and he, he advertised it as antique Chinese turtle shell cr uh, craved snuff box. Uh, I don't know why he misspelled crave. Maybe just forgot. Anyway, misspellings happen. It did fine. It brought $399. It was a nice box. Really beautiful piece of export. And then this. This was a bronze that we had featured. Uh, it was a, a late Yuan, early Ming bronze. Um, but uh, it, had, it was a fixed price bronze. But I thought it was a pretty good buy. The buyer had gotten it at a, at a sale not that long ago at Bonham's. Uh, it maybe got a really good deal on it at any rate. You put it up for uh, $936. It sold for that price. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good buy. It was a nice example in good condition and so forth. This was Beacon Gallery over in uh, uh, the UK that had that. Nice thing. And then on to this was that bronze, uh, late Ming, early Qing bronze incense burner with the lion masks uh, on the ends. And uh, it did very well. It brought $2,832. There was another one on here. I think it was a different one. I don't think this was a relisting. I think this was a separate one. Uh, it sold a few weeks ago. It did well also. All right. And then on to this. This was a, a very, very pretty Famille Rose uh, footed bowl. Uh, nice looking example. Here's a, an end shot of it. It's got a little bit of a nick up in here, but, but overall a nice looking thing. And uh, it sold for $599 with 39 bids. Uh, it had a mark on the bottom. Uh, but this was a nice example. This was coast-to-coast uh, -coast, uh, antiques up in New Hampshire. Our friend Steve up there who gets good things. Guy who never goes to bed. He's at every auction in New England. It's hilarious. All right, now on to this. Uh, the snuff bottle, the carved cinnabar lacquer snuff bottle, Qing Dynasty. Uh, the seller wasn't certain about the age, so he said 18th or 19th century. To me, it looks like a 19th century, mid-19th century bottle, perhaps. But nice quality. This, this was a nice little quality bottle. Uh, uh, good color. It looked to be in good shape. Here's a picture of the base. The bottom had a bottom plate in it, probably, originally. They got knocked out because uh, you can see the uh, cement here. Uh, right there on the bottom, but the the work on the bottle itself was quite good. And this is it's always about the art. It's always about how good is the carving, 
And this was a nicely carved bottle. If you look at it, you notice how well the clouds are done. They're nicely layered. It's very three-dimensional and so forth. Same carving techniques that you see on early, early, really fine, a nice, fine, slightly before 1850 sandalwood on that tortoiseshell box we saw. Uh, the carving was quite distinct in that period, and this was a nice one. And it did fine. It brought $428, which I think was a pretty good buy because it had its original lacquer stopper. Most of the time, they don't. The stoppers are long gone, and they've been replaced with a hard stone stopper. So that was a very nice buy. This was a cello also over in the UK, over in Glasgow. And this was that uh, sort of grisaille uh, biscuit decorated uh, cup. I thought this was nice, quite unusual. Um, uh, usually these, of course, are all, you know, glazed up and, and uh, you know, the, the decoration is under the glaze. And they're usually enameled. This is a nice little handled cup um, with inscription on it, okay? And I think this was relatively a very, very good buy, okay? It had a very thin, thin layer of glaze on the biscuit and a nice cup. And it brought $256, which I think was a good buy. Uh, turn of the century, but uh, nice thing, nice thing. And then on to uh, this was the, uh, I'm going to pull this up here, hold on, there we go, was this uh, really nice transitional period landscape uh, dish. It's a, it's a fairly well-known pattern, uh, pretty well-known pattern, and it's got this, uh, you know, tooth border running around it and so forth, and you have the sort of stylized boats in the foreground of the lower part of the scene and so forth. Nice looking plate. And it brought $256. This was from uh, Ceramics and Collectibles over in the Netherlands. They always have a lot of stuff on, on, on eBay. We, we always have a link to some of their things uh, in each newsletter each week just so you can get there quicker. And uh, on to this, the jade, the jade peaches uh, with the nice russet inclusions and so forth. This was a nice carving. I, I looked at this pretty carefully and I actually had a couple of people inquire about it. Uh, they wanted to know what I thought, and I thought it was a nice uh, carving, at least uh, you know mid mid or so 19th century. Very good quality, uh, but uh, there's a lot of copies of these around, as you know. And we're kind of leery at times to put jades on because we're not we, we're not uh, too certain about their age. But the detail in this one and the, and the quality of the work and the scale, the proportion, the artwork and all, it all looked okay to us. We thought it was pretty nice. And so did a lot of other people, apparently. It brought $3,050. Had it been a knockoff, it would have brought, you know, maybe a couple of hundred. But a number, quite a number of people uh, really liked it. And this was a, a seller we know out in the Midwest collecting Asia. He, gets, he always seems to have good things. He's a pretty reliable seller, I think. He does a good job. And uh, on to this. This was one of the nifty buys of the week. I talked about this uh, last week. This is the, uh, the painting. Uh, it's an early 20th century painting, 1900 to 1930 or so. But it's an interesting painting, and the colors are pleasing. And you have a couple of immortals here uh, uh, being uh, surrounded by attendants. There's a fellow carrying scholars' books, and they're getting ready to go boating. And going boating was a very popular pastime uh, uh, throughout Chinese history. It was considered to be a way to connect with nature. And uh, here you have uh, th these two fellows uh, getting, getting ready to go out. And I think this sold very reasonably, framed and ready to go. $81, only had eight bids. That was a nice buy. That was a dandy little painting, about 100 years old, and, um, and an interesting scene. An interesting scene. So I hope one of you got it because you got a heck of a nice buy on that, I think. The framing job would cost you 150 is 200 bucks. <laughs> All right, and then on to here, we have the, the two hat stands. They're Famille Rose, early 20th century, judging by the uh, pictures. Yeah, l late 19th, early, probably early 20th century. Uh, nicely done, though, and they brought $711, which is a pretty reasonable price given what some of these hat stands bring these days. Um, it, it was a nicely decorated, good color, good, you know, the regular size and all that. Uh, very, very pretty. And uh, I think that was a, a de perfectly good buy. And then on to this. This is a rare thing. A couple of people asked about this this week. This is a, a Chinese export uh, piece that was made in the 18th century. And these were meant to be mounted on a wall with the hand sticking out and a candle in it. And uh, these were typically done in pairs. A nice enamel decoration on it. Um, they don't turn up very often. Christie's has them occasionally. Here's the bottom of it. It's all flat with a hole uh, so you can hang it on a hook. 
All right, and these were meant for export. There's some fritting, which is very typical and a good indicator of age up in here where the uh, paste was bent when it was fired. And then you have this, these, these areas around the edge. This is an early uh, 1760 to 1775 uh, Chinlung period thing meant for export. And uh, I don't think it, it went crazy. I think this was a, a pretty good buy for a collector, $1,423, because these, these, these pieces are fairly rare. Um, and it was that was a, a nice example. It's too bad it wasn't the full pair. The pairs of these can bring five thousand uh, once you get them, once you get them paired up. All right, and then on to this: the Famille Rose planters on the wooden stands. These were early twentieth century, I would suppose, based on the bottoms. Uh, they have the little spurs here, here, and here. And these these little spurs were put under there, little bits of uh, clay in the kiln to support the bottom of the planter to keep it uh, from from bowing, sticking to the bottom of the kiln and so forth. And it had the feet in the corners. And then when they pull them out, they just snap these little spurs off. They would be about the length of where the foot is. And it was just, a, a, these were little supports. And they were used on bulb trays and planters and that kind of thing. Here's another image of it. This was a nice little uh, planter. Uh, note the uh, it was the guy did a good job photographing it. Uh, notice the orange peel is a nice uh, sort of irregular orange peel on it. The fakes always have a very regular orange peel. It should be very alarming to you. Orange peel typically spends a little bit erratic. All right, and here's a picture of the interior. Uh, they were missing their original porcelain under trays, which is pretty common. Occasionally we see them with them, but just these didn't have them. And they brought $1,080, which I think was perfectly fine. $500 a piece for these is certainly in the range of what they bring. Um, they're, they're, he has them as 19th century. I think they're probably early 20th century, but it doesn't matter much because they didn't change the way they made things terribly between 1880 and up as late as 1920. Um, so it's uh, you, you got to sort of keep that in mind. All right, and then on to this. This was a gem of a little dish. I thought this was such a pretty dish. Uh, beautifully decorated, 18th century, uh, nice interior lands, uh, figural scene, people sitting at a table, kids uh, walking around. Uh, there's uh, some folks chatting in through the uh, open door, a woman on the right through the open door, and uh, two figures in the window. It's sort of a very sort of idyllic Chinese scene. Nicely done, and these this was made for export to the West uh, to give folks, you know, this is what, what Chinese life is like. Um, not many Chinese families had big root trees and things growing in their courtyards. They didn't have courtyards, but it's a nice painting. At any rate, it, it did fine. It's not a big plate. It's only about eight inches wide. It brought $440, and it's mostly due to the really nice enamel decoration on it in the overglazed blue. Beautiful example. All right, and then on to this, the Republican period vase uh, with the tiger. This was a neat little vase. Uh, good white porcelain, uh, good enamel decoration all the way around. It was nicely and evenly glazed, had a nice looking shape to it, though I think the guy with the camera got a little too close to it. Um, cameras these days, I've said it before, I'm going to repeat this, is that uh, a lot of digital cameras today, unless you're using a very expensive camera, um, have a slightly bowed lens. They're slightly con uh, convex. And when you get too close to something, it causes uh, a bit of lens distortion of the object. It tends to make it look bigger in the middle and narrower at the top and bottom. And you want to back up when you take your pictures. And if you use your zoom to get in close as this, as this fellow wanted to be, um, you do not get this effect. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work that way. The camera physically has to be close to the object. And uh, regardless, this did well. It brought $1,526. Right, not a big surprise. We've all seen these Republican pieces do very well. Here's another example. All right, but nice quality. And here's that other Republican base. I had uh, a number of inquiries about this. I, told, I thought this was an awfully nice thing. It was odd, though, because it was languishing at about $20 for the first five or six days it was up. I think uh, a lot of people, were, from what I could tell, were putting it on watch lists, and they all jumped on it toward the end. This was a beautiful example, very nice quality Republican work. Here's the picture of the bottom. It did have a chin lung mark, but uh, of course it's apocryphal, and during the 1930s they used the, the bogus chin lung mark with gilt background, but that nice wide white foot unglazed, and then you come in and look at the detail, the shading of the faces, the shading of the enamels, uh, the expressions on the faces, and so forth. Very good work. This was a really nice vase. And uh, in the end, it did, it did super duper. It ended up selling for $6,600.
all right? But not unusual for one of these. We've seen some of these can go into six figures, not this particular one, but, but I, th I thought it was awfully nice. And if you look at the bid history on this, I just want to share this for a second. Um, up, and, uh, up until the, uh, what was it, about the, uh, the, 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 the 16th or so of this week, it was at 600 bucks. There it is. The 16th, it was $600. It was closing in just uh, a couple of days. Okay, it closed on the on on the 17th, the next day. So in the last day, uh, this is a lesson for people at Solid Auction. Uh, it was at $640 on the 16th, and it closed at 6,000 on the 17th. So it went up a thousand percent, or ten times its uh, price in the last 24 hours, and that's that's typically how it goes. Um, I always tell people, you know, if you're worried, wait, and, wait until the, the morning of, the day of, see how it looks, um, you know, when you're um, about, you know, 10 or 12 hours, 13 hours out, and you have a better idea, because by then it had jumped up into the $1,000 range, and then at the very end, in the last couple seconds, it went from 1200 3300 6600 it leapt, uh, very typical. All right, and now on to this, the Chinese export uh, uh, pot with handles. This is a nice 18th century example. And it also was languishing at a very low price for a while. Uh, but this is a beautiful example, and it's fairly rare. Um, here's a picture of the bottom, and it's got this glazed outer foot with a flatter inner ring. Here it is. Nice iron oxide line around it, that nice blue. Uh, beautifully done. It was fired on a disc because you notice the, the base, the foot, the foot is glazed. Well, because it sat on a support here, this big support that was unglazed, held it up so they could fully glaze the foot uh, for putting on tables and furniture without scratching them. And I think this was a nice buy, $878, not unreasonable at all, really not. That was a nice thing and pretty, um, beautiful quality. And then over here to the uh, oh, Jai, Jai Ching period or Wan Li uh, peach dish, uh, nice example. It's got the diaper pattern running around the edge, uh, that nice, soft, very, very distinctive late uh, uh, 17th century, or, I mean 16th century blue and uh, nicely outlined, very folky. And it brought $374. Nice looking thing. And then over here, this was a dish that was on Catawiki. It was an 18th century one. And it's got these big, uh, this big uh, uh, bamboo tree growing up through the middle with um, a peach tree over here. And then you have these citron, uh, or I mean citron plant rather, you have the citron fingers coming out here. And then you have the crosshatch border, brown dressing, uh, diaper pattern. It had everything going on. It was a nice looking thing. And um, what the heck did this bring? If I can close the window. There it is. It, it went for $434, which I think was a pretty good deal. I think that was a nice plate for that. Um, so there's one thing that, that slipped through there. It was something we had on the, well, we put it, actually put it on the, uh, on the uh, um, uh, featured page, because I just thought it was a ni really nice bowl. And then back to this was that, uh, it's called John Ware Crackle Glazed Vase with enamels, beautiful thing. I actually heard from the fellow that bought it. He was he was wondering why the seller hadn't shipped it out yet. Uh, it had been four or five days. A lot of these sellers don't ship all the time. They only ship on weekends. So I hope he gets back to him and uh, allays his fears that he's gonna ship it. This was a nice, nice vase, and I think it was a very good buy. Paid $1,084 for it, uh, but quite unusual. And this was pretty good size. As I recall, it was 17, how tall? 17 inches tall. It was a good size vase. This form, typically, with this neck and shoulder, typically these are uh, uh, 10 to uh, 13 inch vases. This one was a bit bigger in that shape, which was kind of nice. I like that. All right. And then over here, we're going to take a look at what's coming up um, on eBay, closing in the next uh, few days. This closes on Monday. <clears throat> this is a really nice big dragon uh, silk on this uh, uh, worked ground but beautifully done dragons. Um, if you like uh, Chinese textiles, you want to check this out. Beautifully articulated dragons. There's two of them chasing the pearl in the center. Uh, here's the other one and so forth. Here's the center, there's the flaming pearl, this nice aubergine uh, silk. Uh, and then you have the very classical wave pattern forming, uh, forming the framework to it. Uh, just a good looking piece of silk. And it should do pretty well. It's got three days to go. It's up to $300. But if you're a silk collector, this is something worth looking at. It's got a couple of pulls in it, maybe. But the work on the middle is very good. All right. And then over here, 
Um, we have other, a lot of silk this week for some reason on eBay. I'm not sure why. There's this very nice dragon robe that went up a few days ago. Closes on Tuesday. Uh, it's up to $1,135. Uh, good quality work. Um, here's the, the liner to it. It has been worn. Um, uh, this is a, a nice uh, lat, late 19th century robe. Vibrant colors, though. The colors on this look pretty good to me. Uh, there's some damage up here in the sleeve, so you have to get that off to get it fixed. And there's some pulls there. This thing was obviously worn, but it was a very nice quality uh, example, and it's got this beautiful soft peach colored uh, thread in it, which I like a lot. At any rate, it's up to $1,135, and it should bring three or 4000 um, even with the damage. Uh, because that can be mended, but uh, good, nice old robe, good old robe. And then there's um, this robe with the roundels on it. Again, another nice 19th century robe. Had similar wear up here on the shoulders, and incidentally, that wear is if you collect robes, don't keep them on coat hangers, all right? Um, we've seen this many times over the years. People have these old robes, and they keep them in closets, and they use western coat hangers on them. And this is where the coat hanger end ends, and it's bent all the time, and the thread just frays away from being on that coat hanger. Fold these up if you're not going to have them out and um, hung properly with a rod running across. A rod should be inserted at this end and run all the way across, and it gives nice, even support, and you can display it. Uh, generally, you're better off doing it under glass because uh, being in the air all the time, these things can deteriorate. If you're not going to display it, put it away, fold it neatly, and put it in a, uh, uh, a box. All right, and uh, it's got a couple of pulls there, but these do pretty well, and uh, this, should, this also should bring three or $4,000 anyway uh, before it's done. It's a nice old one. And uh, then there's this, this biscuit decorated. I love this. Biscuit uh, in turquoise glaze, uh, seated Buddha with the holding the string of pearls. Uh, this is an a, a early 20th century example, but great expression. The face on this guy is just fabulous. And in the turquoise glaze is nicely done. This is a Ming technique, actually, doing it this way with the exposed colored biscuit and, uh, and, then, and then turquoise glaze. These, this was done in the early 20th century, but it's a very nice one. This is really, a, and he's a jolly fat fellow, isn't he? And uh, it's up to $411. It closes on Sunday. Uh, the seller is a fellow we know over in England. He's a very nice young, youngish dealer, uh, Will, William, and uh, he's got a good eye. Uh, so he, he finds interesting things. I love that. And then on to this, the uh, lime green ground Famille Rose vase. <clears throat> now, it's interesting. Somebody had, uh, had sent this in to me, um, wondering what we thought of it. And I said, it looks like an early Republican base to me. The decoration on it was really nice. And the ground color is highly unusual. But um, the vase has age, in my opinion. This is a, an old vase, uh, probably made between 1915 and 1930s or so, somewhere in the time. I'd have to spend some time looking at it again. But the enamel decoration on it, the coloration is very good. This glaze up here looks nice to me. The facial expressions look very good to me. Um, and it's mounted, it was mounted as a lamp. It'd be a fabulous table lamp. God, the colors are great. And it's good size, it's big. And it's got two days to go and it's only up to $16. And I don't know why, because uh, this, should, this should do very well. This is a nice piece of porcelain, but unusually colored. But uh, it's, a, it's not new, it's a nice old one, I think. And then on to this, the ink box. This closes in a few days. This is a nifty, used, obviously well-used ink box uh, with lots of script on the cover. It's probably, the box is probably made of pectong, judging by the, uh, by the surface and so forth. Uh, really fine script, I think. Really lovely script. Here's the interior of it. It's been used, it's been used. It was used for a long time. That's a well-worn old box. And uh, this is also not uh, only up to $115. It closes tomorrow. If you like early boxes and metalware with script on them, you want to check that out. It will be on the newsletter, and it's uh, quite a nice thing. And then on to this, the, the Yixing uh, 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 brush pot. This is an interesting little brush pot. It's quite small, uh, beautifully done, nice inscribed uh, uh, areas on it. It's got bamboo trees. Here's the, the mark on the base. All right, this is a good old looking piece of Yiching ware to me. Uh, there's the inscription, nice old running script. It's up to $190. It ends tomorrow, and it should bring, um, you know, 600 to 1,000. It's a nice, nice old pot. All right, and then over here on uh, Catawiki, uh, we have this. Uh, we saw one of these sell um, 
just a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was on eBay or one of these sites. It was similar. It went for $1,500. we will see how that does. Uh, There's a nice pair of Kangxi cups. Uh, they have no bids yet. Kind of surprising. These are really fine, nice, small wine cups. There's a minimum bid of $200 on them. And uh, there's a, a, a Kangxi bowl. And uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is if you come down here, um, you can see them on here, uh, the, uh, the Catawiki listings. You want to go through them because at the bottom, there's also some really good Famille Rose. There's some early Ming, some later Ming stuff. There's a nice crackleware jar and so forth. So you want to check all that out, okay? And uh, that's about it for the week. Um, we're going to be pulling in uh, as much stuff as we can find on eBay to put up this week on the newsletter and check it out before we put it on there. And uh, ditto with Catawiki. Um, and uh, that's it. All right, so I hope you had uh, have, have plans for the weekend and uh, get out there. There's a lot of auctions in New England in the next few days. Uh, so if you're around here, um, uh, check the uh, Maine Antiques Digest website or the uh, uh, Arts and Antiques Weekly or Auction Zip or something. There's a lot going on in New England in the summer. Okay, all right, have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next time. And, and thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed so far. Okay, bye-bye.